Thank you everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Mike Lambert. I'm the administrator of uh, Brockton Area Transit and just wanted to provide a quick welcome. Uh, by way of orientation, we have our transit hub behind us where all of our uh, routes start and end so that customers can transfer easily and get all across the, the city. Uh, our administrative offices are down here. Uh, we have water and restrooms if anyone needs them. Um, parking garage uh, for the commuter rail is right here. Um, and I should also add that we have a cafe now in, in the Bat Center, just behind me. So after the event, if you'd like to head over and grab some hot chocolate, coffee, donuts, feel, please feel free to do so. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, we, um, Bat started up in the mid-1970s. Uh, in a typical year, we would provide about 3 million uh, passenger trips uh, a year uh, to Brockton and surrounding communities. Uh, but what I wanted to mention today was the 2,000 trips that we provided a day, even at the height of the lockdown, and the fact that we didn't miss a single run due to employee absence during that time, even though the pandemic hit us pretty hard. And a great thanks and appreciation goes out to our, our workers for that. And I think both those facts are a reflection of how deeply rooted we are in this, in this community. Uh, I think out of all the transit agencies in the state, we are by far the one that is most associated with a single community uh, in Brockton. And that's why it's important for us to uh, help support uh, the mayor in terms of his uh, economic development agenda, help our small businesses, help our community organizations as they try and get their message out as we are today, uh, work with our, our elected officials uh, to help bring in resources to the community that, that really help uh, propel uh, Brockton ahead uh, and, and raise the quality of life for all of our uh, residents and visitors. So that's why we're happy today to host this event, host the advertising, help get the word out uh, about this important message uh, that, that you know, there's not only just the, the pandemic and the other challenges we're facing, we also have uh, the opioid crisis that uh, faces Brockton and Massachusetts and, and the nation uh, at large. Uh, and it's very important for us to help um, get, that, get the important word out and help uh, make the message as visible as possible to uh, our customers and to the community at large. So again, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'll hand it over to Susie for, uh, to start the program. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your help and all you've done for us here. My name is Susie Lordy. I'm the founder and president of the 501c3 nonprofit here in Massachusetts called 24 Hour Power Inc. And we do recovery graffiti and recovery art all over the state of Massachusetts. 40 plus events in Brockton, Mass alone. And um, I'd like to take this time to thank our master graffiti artist, Mercavelli, who's here today um, for making an absolutely gorgeous, and this isn't his first time working with 24 Hour Power either. He also created the beautiful billboard that was on Main Street um, that was the first attempt of anyone to highlight the opioid crisis with a huge mural. And his artwork on Roxy, as we call her, is uh, legendary. And now we have this beautiful image as well. And what Never Use Alone is, I'm going to let Stephen Murray tell you about, but I want to let you know that it's a harm reduction hotline that is much needed and much needed to be promoted and, and let people know and get the word out. Um, when you look at the amount of people who die of overdoses using alone, it's imperative that they don't use alone. So never use alone. This revolutionary hotline is going to make a world of difference. And we're just so grateful that we're able to promote this first here on the Brockton Bat Bus um, and on a bunch of different lines because we also have 10 interior car ads that are going to be on 10 different buses. So there's 11 buses total that are going to have um, never use alone information out there with the hotline um, available to people. And in addition to that, then we're also going to be able to feature artwork very similar to this in Tukas Park, which is the playground on Melrose Street right in Brockton. And we know that they've had some issues with people coming out of the woods that unfortunately have been using drugs on one end of the park. So we're going to be able to have some 
amazing promotional material there to let people know, hey, listen, you're not alone. Here's a phone number. Please call. We're here to help. So above and beyond what the city of Brockton does to help with the fight the opioid crisis is second to none. And as, as a community organization, I couldn't be feel more blessed and lucky to work with the city of Brockton. So thank you very much for joining us for the fight on drugs. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Stephen Murray to briefly describe Never Use Alone. And then we're going to turn it over to our, our distinguished elected officials. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susie. Thanks so much, everyone, uh, for coming out today. I'm actually going to take this off so you can hear me a little bit better. Uh, my name is Stephen Murray. Um, I'm the state administrator for Never Use Alone, Massachusetts, New York, and Vermont. Um, professionally, uh, I serve uh, our community and, and Western Mass as a paramedic. Uh, I've been a first responder for the past seven years, and I've uh, witnessed the overdose crisis uh, firsthand, uh, having responded to more than 100 overdoses myself. Uh, personally, I'm also um, uh, been very affected by this. Uh, I'm in long-term recovery from opioid use disorder. Uh, this year I'll be um, celebrating uh, 10 years, and it's, uh, it's been quite a, quite a journey. So just to give you a little bit of history about Never Use Alone, um, Never Use Alone was founded by a guy named Mike Brown um, in August of 2019. Um, Mike, like me, was just tired of seeing his friends and family members uh, die alone. Uh, and so he created this virtual hotline where people could call in, <clears throat> they could speak with somebody who uh, was going to listen to them, keep them safe while they were using. And uh, it is just, it's just taken off. And you know, little did, little did Mike know that only six months after starting the hotline, uh, we would be facing COVID uh, with increased isolation uh, by the people who are using drugs, uh, who were, were impacted by this in a very big way. And so the line has really taken off with more than uh, 2,200 calls to date. Uh, we've had 12 overdoses, which is only 0.5% uh, of our calls end in overdose. And as someone who listens to these calls uh, during the, the quality improvement process, I, I, I wish I could share them with you guys. They're, they're very beautiful. Um, it's, it's probably not what many people would imagine. Um, hearing two people who don't know each other, who are connected just over the phone, uh, talking about life and their struggles and their shared experience. And what's, what's really unique about Never Use Alone is that we're not a recovery hotline. Uh, we are a harm reduction hotline. We are here just to take care of people in the moment. Uh, whether or not their drug use is considered chaotic or disordered, uh, we're here for, pe for people in that moment uh, to keep them safe. Um, Never Use Alone is, is really just a Band-Aid where we need a tourniquet. And the overdose crisis needs some very strong legislative action here in Massachusetts. And I'm, I'm so happy to be uh, joined by all of our electeds. Uh, and, and many of them know, as, as well as I do, that we need supervised consumption sites uh, in this community uh, so we can do the service that we're offering virtually um, in person to keep people safe. These are our friends. These are our family members. These are our children. And so I ask all of you to just join me in supporting these sites and writing to your elected officials to ask them to, to support these sites. Uh, until then, and after, Never Use Alone will be here for you. Uh, and just know that, that we are an anonymous hotline. We don't store any of your data. Uh, we are really just here to, to take care of you and to keep you safe. And thank you so much to everyone uh, who's come out uh, today. Thank you to Susie, thank you to Merck. Um, this is really just, this is unbelievable. This is so special. And I can't believe that, the, that we're, we have a federal study, uh, the Healing Community Study, supporting this type of harm reduction work. So thank, thanks so much. Beautiful job, Stephen. And on that note, it is my honor and privilege to turn the microphone over to the mayor of Brockton, Mayor Robert Sullivan. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you, thank you Susie. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to, uh, first of all, welcome you to the City of Champions. I want to acknowledge uh, our great uh, elected officials that are here, uh, Senator Mike Brady, uh, State Rep and Leader uh, Claire Cronin, State Rep Jerry Cassidy, and Tim Cruz, Plymouth County DA. Uh, I just want to first of all thank Mike Lambert and his team at Bass, BAT for hosting us here. Susan Lordy, who is a true treasure in the city of Brockton, and she's saving lives every single day with 24-hour power. 
Uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Murray, for sharing uh, what you're doing. Uh, and as a first responder, you're saving lives because of the pandemic. The greatest risk when you use is to use alone. It's a higher risk of a fatality. So this artwork is going to save lives. The mission is to make sure that we can assist those that are dealing with, with the, the crisis. It's a tsunami. It's killing lives, not just in the city of Brockton, the Commonwealth, but in the nation, in the world. So to be able to utilize this visual and the graphic artist is Merck. Uh, Merck, thank you. Thank you. It's unbelievable. Uh, but at the end of the day, as mayor, my role is to have a, a, safety, a safe, healthy city of Brockton. So working together in collaboration uh, with a mission of saving lives is what it's all about. So I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. And I look forward to many, many more of these events. Thank you. God bless you all. It's now my honor and privilege to invite Senator Michael Brady. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, first of all, let's give Susan Lordy a round of applause. She's doing a yeoman's work out there. Uh, I met Susan at an event in Rockland at the Eagles Club a couple of years ago. I got asked to go to this event, and I had lost two of my cousin's children in Rockland to opioid addiction, and a family never recovers. And I, I think you are doing God's work, and Corinne Capiello, who works with the city of Brockton, let's give her a round of applause. And there's a lot of unsung heroes out there, and thank you to the artists who did this work. This is great, and, and all the other people that are behind the scenes doing advocacy on behalf of our friends and families that have addiction issues. It's a never-ending battle, and uh, fortunately with our state delegation, Rep. Claire Cronin, who's a majority leader, she, she was here, she had to go to another meeting, but she, she is a great leader in the state house with Representative Jerry Cassidy, and, and who's here, and Rep. Michelle Dubois and myself. We got funding in the budget to help with the recovery crisis out there, and we're going to continue to fund that, as well as passing legislation, and please, as was mentioned, there's still more work to do, so if we need to get more legislation passed, we're always working on your behalf, and you are on the front lines. You know more than us what it takes to help with this addiction situation. So please don't hesitate to contact us, and we are all working together in the Commonwealth. So, uh, and thank you to the mayor as well, because he's been a leader in our DA, Tim Cruz. He's not always out there to prosecute people, but always there to help people with addiction to get them off the streets as well. So. But I'm just a part of a team. We work together in the state delegation. As I mentioned, Rep. Claire Cronin was here. She had to go to another meeting. But I'm going to hand it over to Representative Jerry Cassie, who's a great advocate on behalf of this issue as well. Good Senator from Brockton. Thank you very much. And uh, Susie, thank you. Thank you for everything you do. And Tim Murray, I tell you, bringing your kids here to Brockton, isn't that just wonderful? I know your son wants to get on the bus because it says, welcome aboard. <laughs> So uh, I just want to thank everybody, Pastor Roberto, so many great people. The Mayor of Brockton, thank you very much for everything you do. And we can't, can't forget to uh, call 1-800-972-0590. So uh, it's a wonderful program, and I, I, I thank you very much for being here. I'm not sure if, uh, are you next? <laughs> no, well, thank you, thank you very much. Susie? Oh, what? Actually, the yeah. DA. Yes. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to introduce District Attorney Timothy Cruz. Tim has been a proud supporter of 24-Hour Power, Inc. For, since we've been around, Tim. Uh, your community reinvestment funds are being put to good use continually, and we can't thank you enough. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thank you, Sudi. I'll be real quick. Um, I want to thank everybody that's already been thanked because it's a great job. Merck, once again, is very similar to Roxy. Uh, who, who we use as our Plymouth County Outreach over our poster board now as we continue to deal with the crisis, not just here in Brockton, but throughout our county, working with all the police officers, all the police departments, all the first responders, bringing in you know, recovery coaches and uh, non-uniform police officers coming to homes days after uh, a non-fatal overdose. So we watch our numbers in Plymouth County, unfortunately, so far this year uh, through March, we've had 25 fatal overdoses. You know, last year, uh, we, had, we saw a plateau, I think, the last couple of years, even with COVID. Uh, which I think is a good thing. However, one death is too many. And by everybody working together, like you know, Rep. Cassidy said, and uh, all the different people that are here today, the mayor has been a, a true partner in dealing with the opioid crisis, and Senator Brady, it, it takes everybody together to get in front of this. And I think that Brockton has been leading the way in many different instances of the opioid crisis. 
what little parts we can do with our with our, our drug forfeited money that we put back into the community, working with Susie, other groups, other agencies are making differences every single day. It's baby steps, it's one step at a time, but I think that we've saved lives, I think we'll continue to do that. So I want to thank everybody for coming out here today, thank the Bat Bus and everybody else that uh, has put this on, and hopefully we're going to continue to be able to do this before we make the next step that we have to do. So thanks so much. Another pillar of our community is Pastor Roberto Silviera. Pastor Roberto is the head of the Homeless Improvement Project, and he's the main pastor for Universal Missionary Church right over there on North Main Street. And his, his congregation is nearly 100% people experiencing homelessness. So you want to talk about doing God's work on earth. Pastor Roberto, you're second to none. Could you please come up and say a couple of words? Oh, I very privileged to be here. Thanks, Susan. Susan's doing a great job. She's been helping us uh, with so many blessings for the, our community, uh, the homeless community. And um, this will be a great way for us to to help the homeless. Like yesterday and the day before, one of my volunteers just had an overdose yesterday. Well, and he. Gladly, he was not alone when he was, you know, in that situation. We were able to run and apply the medication and call the ambulance. But this really is going to save a lot of lives in our community and all the communities in this country that we will be able to pass that on. And I ask everyone pass that number on because that number, one call can save many, many, many lives. So thank you very much, my brother. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Susan. We can't wrap this up without thanking personally the Heal Coalition for what they've done for us. So on that note, Gary, would you like to come up and say a few words? Come on, great. We've, we've got two folks coming up here to speak on behalf of... None of this would have been possible without funding from this grant, okay? So the Brockton Healing Community Study was the one that made this all happen for us. So we want to thank you very much for the financial and the, and the spiritual support on getting this going. Thank you so much. Gary? All right. Like, thank, thanks for having us um, today. Um, yeah, I'm really proud of work. This is my, this is my uh, swan song uh, of work, and then after this I'm going to take a vacation and travel. But um, this project is really, really important to me personally from watching how we've struggled and um, with people overdosing and today even more dangerous with COVID, a drug supply that is poisoned. Um, I know in my town just the other night, a, a girl 17 years old snorted what she thought was cocaine and she died. You know, this is happening in every community in, in the Commonwealth. And uh, I'm grateful that the, uh, the Boston Medical Center um, is leading the way and pulling our communities together and and during this process I want like the most important thing is we can sustain this these efforts to continue long after the heel study and long after BMC is out of the picture we want this to be sustained in your community to save the lives of our neighbors and I'm gonna hand this over to Rebecca thank you Gary yeah, my name is Becky Smilzer. I'm the community data manager for the Healing Community Study Coalition in Brockton. And the Healing Community Study has a really ambitious goal um, of trying to reduce opioid overdose deaths by 40 percent. And it's rooted in harm reduction. So the fact that this is a harm reduction um, hotline and the fact that we're really encouraging harm reduction principles to be involved in all these efforts um, is so important. And we know that we wouldn't be able to make that hit that big of a goal without the community leading the way and the community coalition being making the calls. So we really appreciate that you know what is going to make the impact um, and what's going to reduce deaths and save lives. And so it's so exciting to see this in action and be here in Brockton and and get it get it going, get this off the ground and be surrounded by so many partners here in person while we're fighting this overdose epidemic within a pandemic. So thank you 
We are honored to be here with you. And, and that will wrap our day here. So thank you very much for coming and joining us. And please make sure that you check out this bus. Um, the inside is decorated with lots of our advertisements in addition to out here. So please get your picture taken. This is a landmark occasion and we can't thank you enough. We look forward to traveling the city roads of Brockton right now. Okay, take care. <laughs>